ISRO. Prior to this role, Venkat was associated with Antrix, the commercial arm of ISRO and SES in Singapore. In all, he has over 20 years of experience across geographies in the defense and space seg uh, sector. Venkat, thank you very much for agreeing to be a part of this panel. Welcome. Our next panelist, Mr. William Blair, Vice President and Chief Executive for Lockheed Martin in India. Mr. Blair leads the growth and development of Lockheed Martin's business in India and serves as the executive representative for all of Lockheed Martin's programs, products and services in the country. Earlier, he was Vice President Strategic Solutions and Middle East Executive with Lockheed Martin Space Systems, where he led and developed strategic solutions and expanded business opportunities in countries within the Gulf Cooperation Council and Israel. A career spanning over 30 years, he has held roles of increasing responsibility with global assignments, including in India, where he was based on several prior occasions. Mr. Blair, thank you very much for agreeing to be a part of this panel. Next panelist is Mr. Andalib Shadman, the MD of Hensold Private Limited. Andalib Shadman, he commenced his professional journey as a scientist at ADE, DRDO, working on systems integration aspects for fighter aircraft. Later, he moved to Honeywell and then Airbus, where he was heading engineering and operations for, of Airbus DS India as chief operating officer. When Hensoldt was carved out from Airbus in uh, 2017, he took the responsibility of establishing the brand Hensoldt and local footprint in India. Hensoldt is currently focusing on building industrial collaborations to offer indigenous products and solutions to Indian customers. Andalip Shadman, thank you very much for agreeing to be a part of this panel. And Mr. Laura Jean, the COO and CTO, Naval Group India. Currently, Mr. Laurent Jean is a highly accomplished uh, a military engineer uh, with an extensive career in defense and maritime industries. He currently holds key position as the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Technical Officer at Naval Group India. His impressive journey includes managing global uh, submarine maintenance services, directing significant projects in India, and making significant contributions to various organizations. Mr. Jean, thank you very much for agreeing to be a part of this panel. Uh, gentlemen, uh, please take a seat. I would like to announce that uh, the chief executive of General Atomics, Dr. Vivek Lal, was supposed to come and uh, deliver the keynote address for this session, but unfortunately he uh, has taken ill, he's unwell and he has to undergo a surgery, so he could not make it. However, he was gracious enough to send us a video message despite being, being unwell. So this morning we received a message from him which we would like to play for you before I hand over the session to the moderator. Can we have the message, please? Hello, friends. I was very much wanting to be with all of you at the India Defense Conclave. But unfortunately, uh, health issues preventing me from traveling at this point uh, to Delhi. It is, of course, my loss. I have been a regular at the previous editions of the Bharat Shakti event and know that Nitin manages to put together a great assembly of Indian defense sector uh, under one roof. And from the program that I've seen this year, it's only gotten bigger and better. And so we at General Atomics are very proud to be associated with this India Defense Conclave event. and. Um, I'm sure that this will provide an exciting opportunity for defense majors across the world, as well as Indian defense companies, uh, to interact and, and strengthen and modernize the armed forces in India. I wish that the conference is a resounding success, and I look forward to reading the takeaways that come from the proceedings of this important conference and the important speakers. I again want to thank Nitin and the Bharat Shakti team for this great conference. Thank you. Can I have a round of applause for that, please? Thank you so much. I now hand over the session to the moderator. Uh, thank you, Nilanjana. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, let me welcome my panel. I think it's uh, one of the heaviest panels that I have ever come across the best of industries in the whole world, and all of the top men are over here with us. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. We'll have a discussion, and I just want to read out uh, what's the subject being told. Building India's defense future, role of OEMs. Now, 10 years back also, and uh, I get this idea while we were going through the previous uh, uh, discussion that was over here. Uh, 10 years back, perhaps it would have just meant how much money can we spend, 
and how much equipment from which country to buy, comparison between one country, another country, third country, and your purse, depth of your purse, and then you go in for the equipment. But today when we go to buy, even if you're buying from abroad, we're looking at technology transfer, we're looking at so many other things, we're looking at co-production over here. So perhaps the kind of assistance that we are expecting from OEMs abroad in terms of the Indian industry's growth has uh, gone up leaps and bounds. So I would suggest that we keep that in mind and you uh, let's get across this discussion on that note. Uh, the first gentleman that I really want to go to is Venkat. Uh, Venkat, let's see, the C295 is a big order for you. Uh, so you are the one most recently in the, in the news and so that's why I want to start with you. Uh, how will it go forward? Will, it, will someday, let's say, we see Tata as the center of C295 being manufactured over here? Uh, will we see sudden developments, further developments of the C295 meant for a better performance? How, will it, how do you visualize it going on? Um, very good afternoon uh, to esteemed uh, representatives from the various nations. Um, good afternoon, Nitin and team. Congratulations on putting up this show. I think this is my second uh, year I'm attending, and it's my pleasure and honor. Um, the question, I think before I answer the question, Chatterjee, um, I would like to, for the benefit of audience, I would like to share um, about how unique this C295 program is for India. You know, I think I'm sure you're aware this is the first unique Make in India program involving an Indian um, private industry as well as Indian DPSUs as well as the, the various uh, MSME along with the foreign OEM. It was under a buy and make category. Of course, few flyaways and the rest have to be done out of India. I think that gives a quite a legitimacy and hand-holding and a sort of a confidence for an Indian private industry to, to take on. So I think we are, we are glad to share that the program is really going well. And as uh, A. Chief Marshall has uh, shared um, this morning, uh, it was a historic moment for all of us, for Airbus, for TASL, uh, for entire DPSUs, BEL, BDL, and including MSMEs, uh, to see the first C-295 aircraft being inducted into the fleet of Indian Air Force end of uh, September very recently. And as far as the program, uh, it's uh, really going well. We are working alongside with uh, our partner TASL in productionizing the aircraft, um, the subcomponents, the assemblies, as well as supporting, guiding them in establishing the final assembly line to ensure the, the aircraft out of uh, Indian fall is also on time. I think, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a task ahead of us. The first uh, C-295 has been delivered. Uh, you know, we're parallelly working alongside to ensure that the rest of the remaining 15 flyaways are delivered on time and on quality and alongside working with uh, the TASL as well as including the MSMEs to shape the industrial ecosystem and to deliver the value uh, what we have committed to the customer Indian Air Force. Again, I take this opportunity to express really a gratitude to Ministry of Defense Indian Air Force for their continued support in shaping and guiding us um, in ensuring this the first Make in India program is a success and we are really adapted there. Uh, thank you. Let's get on to you, William. Uh, and my question is, it's going to be mostly, as I see it, you know, some kind of partnership. Since the morning, again, in various sessions, that's what being talked about, partnerships, cooperation, technology, this thing, joint ventures. So you've got some joint ventures over here. How has the experience been? How has the run been? What do you see it achieving, let's say, in the near future? Yeah, no, and I want to express my thanks, too, to Nitsin Gokhale and, and yourself, Brigadier Jan Chaturjee, uh, for pulling this together, we're, we're pleased to be part of this over the last four or five years. Um, 
you know, given the title, uh, you know, what's the foreign OEM's responsible responsibility to uh, the India defense uh, sector? I think it starts with the end user, uh, because it's our responsibility to deliver capability, uh, deliver solutions, uh, reliability, availability, and then ultimately the ability to sustain and upgrade those platforms and systems uh, here in India. Uh, and, and I think that's that's where we start. And and even adv in advance of the C-130J requirement, well over a decade ago, we sought out, to your question, a partner. Uh, we worked with Tata to start building the C-130J empennages here in India out of opportunity, not obligation. Some people look at that and say that was an offset obligation, and, and frankly, it's not. And, and over the last uh, 14 years, we've delivered over 200 empennages, and with that, we've gone from importing components and assembling them to now over 95% indigenous content on the tail of the aircraft, the empennage itself. And so in that, I will say, nearly decade and a half, we, we've helped build up an ecosystem of MSMEs, uh, over 300 suppliers that feed into that capability. And frankly, I would submit that it was a catalyst uh, for where we've reached today, and I, I applaud uh, Airbus for moving forward on the C295 program with Tata as well. And very similarly, we partnered with Tata on the uh, S92 cabin production. Uh, we've produced over 157, and in that case, it migrated from Japan, from MHI in Japan to India. Again, out of opportunity, not obligation. We haven't delivered an S92 in India, but frankly, it helped position us to answer the question when asked, what's your investment in India, uh, your partnerships, uh, how are you delivering on make in India uh, when, when they were evaluating MA60 Romeo just back in early 2020 and coming to the conclusion on that deal. And so in both cases, I think it's really important that we're seeing, not just seen, but we act as a partner uh, with India uh, for India, uh, and really, uh, it was mentioned earlier, um, we're leading with exports, right? We can't predict when the, the particular India requirement will come up. And so, for instance, uh, we, we just announced earlier this year, we're producing fighter wings down in Hyderabad at uh, the Tata Joint Venture. Now, that's in advance of the requirement for the MRFA, but it's exactly what we did with the C-130J as well. Uh, and I think that's what's important. Um, and actually, we're, what we're finding is that the export uh, truly is a catalyst. If you look at the data over the last five years, um, and this gets to the MSMEs, not just the JV partnership, we've got uh, hundreds of suppliers feeding into our global supply chain. Over the last five years, uh, $3 billion worth of exports to the US. Um, of that, for which we're a part, a significant part, um, that's 32% uh, of India's defense exports. Uh, and then with France, I think at around 14%, um, Israel at 3%, Russia at 2%. And so it's a way that we can sim s show our commitment in local partnerships, just as Airbus is now getting to the level of building complete aircraft with a C-295. Um, I think that's where our responsibility as an OEM. But it doesn't end there. It's not just what's the indigenous content on the delivered product. It's about building up the maintenance, repair, and overhaul, and the sustainment capability. That's the way we're able to get to the level of availability and reliability on the, on the C-130Js. That's what we're moving uh, towards on the MH-60 Romeos as they induct those, those helicopters. And I think, um, lastly, I'll say uh, at, at a platform level, as Lockheed Martin, we deliver platforms. So we don't just deliver platforms. We deliver the systems and the capabilities that come with that with our uh, our, our suppliers, our partners. So whether it's GE engines uh, or avionics, EW systems, um, we work with our partners on the platform to ensure that they've got to make an India strategy, that they're part of the solution both to make and maintain in India uh, for the long term. Thank you, William. Uh, next question to you, Laura. Uh, if you could tell us about your company's uh, footprint over here in India. And uh, what kind of, even if you, whether you have a JV or you don't have a JV, on uh, what kind of a cooperation arrangement, et cetera, you have over here? So, good evening, everyone. First of all, maybe uh, I think it's important to, to speak about Naval Group. Okay? We are both um, system designer and uh, we are manufacturing uh, surface ships, we are manufacturing submarines. 
Okay, and we are integrating all the, these uh, systems into these platforms. But we are also a manufacturer of some equipments we, which are integrated on these, uh, on these platforms. So my speech will be uh, considering these two aspects. Um, first, uh, we have been working, it has been quite a long journey because uh, everything started in uh, 2005 uh, for, for us with uh, Mazagon Doc uh, Limited in Mumbai. Uh, we have been working with this shipyard in uh, transfer of technology mode. Okay, we have uh, we have started uh, from uh, initial assessment on the industrial facilities. We have uh, assessed also the the man force, and we have identified uh, uh, improvement plan in order to uh, to ramp up the this shipyard in order to build these uh, scorpion submarines. So. Uh, we have been doing that on the on the on the submarine at the submarine level, and I must say that uh, uh, we are uh, quite proud of uh, what we did because uh, uh, we could uh, we could uh, successfully uh, deliver the submarines to uh, the navy, and these submarines are not uh, second class submarines; they are uh, fully matching with the contractual requirements. And as we discussed uh, already uh, a few minutes ago, everybody knows that uh, Indian Navy is a demanding uh, uh, customer. So we, uh, we, we, could, we could make it. Uh, and uh, we are also very proud to say that from SM3 onwards, because this program was consisting in building six submarines, and from SM3 onwards, MDL on his own as manufactured, as assembled, as tested, and as delivered uh, these uh, submarines to the Navy with a very, very minimal um, involvement of uh, naval group uh, specialists. And this is a success because this was nothing else than the original uh, objective of this uh, uh, transfer of technology to, to MDL. There is another part of the transfer of technology that is uh, not so... Um, uh, commonly uh, understood, but uh, we are uh, we have done more than make in India. Okay, we have also given some uh, transfer of design processes and design uh, documentation to the uh, design naval directorate of the of the navy, and uh, the navy has then uh, acquired some uh, competencies in the in the modification of the systems of the submarine. Now. If I'm coming back to uh, the other, uh, let's say, role of uh, Naval Group, uh, which is to manufacture some equipment, uh, for, for this part of the, the activity, the model was to uh, select uh, some uh, MSMEs, some partners, to uh, manufacture these, uh, these items. We'll go into MSMEs a little later, uh, and, uh, and then get on back. Uh, so a more or less similar question, what's your footprint like in this country? And what kind of a cooperation, what kind of a joint uh, activity have you undertaken so far with us? Hello. Yeah. So good, good evening, everyone. Uh, I think first of all, uh, it's important to say that I'm a little bit odd, odd one out in this bench because all the three giants sitting nearby me, they are all the platform OEMs. And I am the sensors or a equipment uh, company, uh, but there is an advantage. I can provide systems to all of them. That's the advantage. Uh, 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 coming back to the uh, what we do and uh, uh, what kind of uh, Indian footprint that we have. Uh, it's very important to, to also mention the role of the defense acquisition policies here. And from my point of view, I would regard a DAP 2020 or a release of a DAP 2020 and implementation of, of it as a, as a turning point uh, from my point of view. By the time the policy get implemented, uh, by the time we start seeing the result, it was post, let's say, corona period. This made foreign OEM, uh, uh, you know, uh, a right food for thought to think, how do we handle this whole indigenization topic in India? Because so far, it was okay to do the bill to print. 
it was okay to sell uh, but this particular change in the direction is asking for more and of course this is asking for the new and uh, innovative business model how do we get into the indian market does it mean that i would be uh, let's say letting go of all my uh, uh, iprs or a design which have been done in the last 20 30 years in the back countries and how do i uh, do that so of course there, there was a lot of uh, internal deliberations within the companies uh, 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 and 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 i i could say that from my side our company uh, uh, we we made our strategy considering this policy and the indian requirement into mind we have a different building building let's say um, business models uh, we have been working with uh, public sectors msmes and uh, and depending on the uh, volume of the business or the technology we have a different collaboration or engagement model uh, for some cases, we are even going for an IPR sharing. We are, we are even going for an IPR sharing in which we are kind of a transferring the product to India. And when I say transferring, it is not only the production transfer, it is a design transfer with also a, 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 an, 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 a business model where this Indian entity would also get an opportunity to export it once they start building it of course it's it cannot be done for all the products but these are the uh, depending on the business cases on a product by product but we are doing it the, the second uh, uh, kind of a business model that we are doing is a kind of a co-development because i said and i think a lot of uh, uh, the panelists before also said the right point that gone are the days for the co uh, only for the, uh, let's say, local manufacturing. Now we need to go a little bit up. A co-production is a nice model in which a things uh, comes from the foreign company and the remaining things are uh, 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 taken care by the Indian, uh, Indian primes or the Indian industry with their own design, of course, with the support from the OEMs. In this model, uh, first of all, the intent of the IDDM category meets easily. Uh, it also gives a, a, a good uh, confidence to the foreign OEM that yes, there, there, are, there is an Indian company, a capable company is, you know, can do more research, can, can do much more than the bill to print. And there are a future chances to get the company also into the global supply chain. So that's a kind of a business model that we are right now working with. I hope that answers the question, Mr. Chatterjee. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right, uh, gentlemen, I've got two, three issues, and I've got just about 10 or 12 minutes. So I will request you to be a little crisp so that we can have your views on a couple of issues rather than just one. Uh, right, uh, the next issue that I have is MSMEs. Uh, how are you going to, they're a very critical part, I don't have to tell you that. They have a very critical part of the entire ecosystem. So how are you going to train them? How are you going to hold hands? How are you going to get them strong enough so that they can really support you. Let's start with you again, Venkat. Yeah, um, as uh, I've mentioned, uh, we are working alongside uh, with our uh, Indian industrial partner. I think it's important once again to recollect the, the, the process in which the C295 program uh, has been signed. It, it was a buy and make. And I truly believe um, from an OEM perspective, and as an Indian uh, personally, I think it's, it gives the legitimacy for an Indian private industrial player to build the legacy. And, and together with TASIL, I think they have the gestation period uh, to evolve uh, and learn. And then also not just themselves, but all to establish the entire ecosystem. And that's exactly where together with TASIL, we are working alongside to build the entire MSME, um, the, the value chain in, in the entire supply chain. So our objective as an OEM uh, to work alongside with a partner to build a, an ecosystem, industrial ecosystem that matches and e that can be absolutely accommodated with the global supply chain of Airbus. You know, that's an objective. So it's not just purely MSME uh, support for the India C295. Objective is to take this um, development or industrialization also possibly into the global supply chain of uh, Airbus. 
that's an object. Uh, right. Will you have something to say? You were talking about MSME last time. If you still have something, so please go ahead. I would just add maybe two points. One, it's, it's uh, orders, right? We need to place orders with the MSMEs, and with that, we're able to mentor, skill, uh, transfer technology where required, tooling, and, and really upgrade the capability, um, and then take it to the next level, as in when, you know, if they start on one program, they want to move up the value chain as well. The other element is startups. Startups are, are the next MSME, and so we've invested as a catalyst for through our India Innovation Growth Program, but like IDEX, we need to, to promote that. So I met some, uh, a missile company, frankly, that started as a startup in 2007, and so I, I think those are two really important dimensions uh, because that's where the, I would say, the heart of our ecosystem is here in India is, is with the MSMEs. Laura. I, w I was starting a um, few minutes ago to explain our model with, uh, with the MSME, mainly uh, focused on the equipments for which we are uh, designers and manufacturers. Uh, uh, of course, we have uh, sourced uh, plenty of them. We have qualified uh, dozens of them. And uh, we have delivered with them the um, items for the uh, initial um, construction phase. It was around 10 to 12 years ago now. And our, our approach with them uh, was origi originally and is still uh, to involve them in the maintenance activities. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is what is uh, giving to uh, us and to them a uh, long-term uh, uh, long um, commitment and long-term involvement in our business uh, in India. Can I have any inputs that you want, Andy? Uh, I think uh, uh, MSMEs or a private industry, in my opinion, is, would be the real fuel and a catalyst for Indian defense growth. And having said that, uh, uh, how we see uh, MSME, I mean, from my point of view, I want to see more SMS, MSMEs coming to software domain in a defense. I want more M MSMEs to invest more into the R&D, uh, uh, research and development uh, at, the, at the lower TRL level, uh, because this is one area, in my opinion, uh, which would definitely uh, 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 help in achieving the self-reliance together with uh, a foreign OEM contribution in the long term. Right. My next question is a bit of a uh, well tussle that you go uh, face, and that tussle is with this Atmanir Bharata. Uh, we are trying to more manufacture more of our stuff ourselves. Uh, isn't the business opportunity for you people wrestling? How are you adjusting to that situation? Or is the opportunity increasing because the scales go bigger? So how are you adjusting to that situation? Yeah, um, as far as the policy, we really, we at Airbus, we really welcome um, the policy of Make in India and actually the, the program, the current that we are running, uh, indeed demonstrates our commitment uh, through the India C295 program. Uh, we truly believe from the transition, as I shared earlier, from a buy and make to eventually uh, for Indian industrial partner to be the prime, we do welcome. And we are uh, really seeing that, um, you know, that being implemented going forward. And we really are open and we are working closely with uh, Tata Advanced Systems Limited, our Indian industrial partner, for them to be prime. And we are, we are working alongside for pursuing the forthcoming uh, C295 opportunities for India um, and then many more to come eventually as well. We welcome that. Will you take? Yeah, no, I, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier. One of our partners is the U.S. government. Um, and being able to, uh, with the platforms and the systems that we're delivering, I think the GE engine uh, deal is a great example working with HAL. For us to get to the levels of Vatman Nirbarbar, to get to the indigenous content, it's going to be a stepwise process. But the investment of effort in the uh, F414 engine is the same uh, kind of technology basis that we can leverage into the fighter offering that we have with the F21. That's transformational. Um, and if we can see more of that, that's going to help us move up, up that um, 
indigenous content curve. Uh, and, and I think that's a way of, of looking at it at stepwise. If, if we had a 50% indigenous content requirement for the LCA out of the box, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have launched that program. So how do we you know, very um, uh, diligently you know, identify that path to self-reliance. And then secondly, I would say, um, and equally and maybe more important, is typically the life cycle cost after the delivery of the aircraft is three, four times, or maybe even more, the initial acquisition. And so we're looking at higher levels of indigenous content in that MRO and sustainment. That's self-reliance, truly, but it's also a high value when you look at the, the ability to, to both manage costs and delivery timelines and, and, and sustainability of those platforms. For sure, um, as I've tried to explain, uh, we, we have been uh, in the Make in India uh, forever. Okay? So this um, at Manir Bar Barat policy is not something new, it's not a threat. Uh, this, is, uh, this is something for which we are uh, quite comfortable. We have we have uh, uh, been uh, using it, I would say, uh, forever. What what is important uh, to to understand also is that our uh, subsidiary Naval Group India Private Limited is uh, fully uh, Indian. Okay, I'm uh, I'm quite exceptional in this uh, in this subsidiary. I think next year we will will touch around uh, 80 uh, employees, uh, more than 80 employees on the, on the payroll, and uh, less than uh, five will be, uh, will be French. Okay? What, what is important is that uh, uh, we have now uh, around 30 uh, engineers uh, working on the technical topics, right? and uh, next year it will, uh, it will ramp up to uh, something like, uh, like 50. What I want to say is that our subsidiary is not the post office uh, sending some questions to the back office in France. Our subsidiary is a real Indian company working on the real uh, technical topics, managing the real maintenance activities that we are doing for, for, for the Navy. And uh, for sure, this is uh, fully compliant with the policy of the government of India. Philip, you have anything to from that? Uh, I think this. Aath Nirbhar policy, uh, as set out by our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, we handled, we understand it, we acknowledge it, and we respect it. Uh, we are trying to uh, evolve our business model around it, uh, so that we uh, we ensure that what we do in India is is you know is compliant to, uh, and also. Uh, uh, have a kind of a win-win solution for both of us, uh, you know, some, I mean, the, the, the buyers and the seller. Uh, yes, it is, uh, uh, I, I must admit that it is not easy. Uh, it has been challenging, but uh, so far we have been pretty successful in this game and we would definitely continue. Uh, there were initial fear that, uh, uh, I think it's important to mention that, okay, fine, uh, to, I mean, uh, would we be relevant after 15 years? If we are doing the uh, more transfer of technology, what will happen to us? What would happen to the foreign OEM? Would we be required to do business? Or uh, uh, so those ca those kind of a fears uh, 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 we need to encounter and we need to address them with the right uh, setup, with the right industrial partners, and the importance of identifying the right indus industrial partner whom you can trust, who is working with you like your. Your, your very close, uh, 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 let's say, uh, 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 company. This is also very important in the whole game. Uh, thank you. Uh, last round of question. I'll have only one, the same question for you and William, both of you. And I'll give you a minute each to talk about anything that you feel like, uh, the other two gentlemen. Uh, but please make it sharp because uh, I'll get fired. You know, my job is not on the line. <laughs> okay. Uh, my question to you is. You see exports uh, from India as far as C2995. Do you see that far? Yeah, that's a quite a legitimate question. And that's a constructive problem to have, uh, given um, the task, the humongous task that we have ahead to first deliver to the Indian Air Force um, out of India, you know, from the Indian fall. That's, that's the first objective that we have. Having said, we see within uh, India itself, 
for Indian Armed Forces, a potential of uh, uh, close to 100 C295s more. So that's a constructive problem. If we can manage uh, while balancing the internal stakeholder requirements, certainly a, a positive problem to have uh, on the export side will be more than willing uh, while balancing the, the internal customer requirements. Uh, William, you, your company has already been explored, uh, exporting. You've been sending the empennages out. Any increase, any other area that you have in mind? Well, you, you know, we would love to get to the point where we can, you know, build aircraft, helicopters, fighters, transport aircraft to meet the Indian requirements and then ultimately uh, meet the export uh, requirements and opportunities that come with that. But I think uh, the real nearest term opportunity is, is maintenance, repair, and overhaul as well. You know, sustaining the platforms that we're operating in country um, locally uh, from a self-reliance perspective. And, and we're going to do that with local partners, with MSMEs that feed into it. It's about spare parts and sustainability. Um, and, and so I think that's uh, uh, equally important and often um, understated in terms of, of the impact. And that, that positions us leveraging what you know, Airbus and others are doing at the also at the platform level uh, to, to take you know to take these opportunities to to a much higher level of of production capacity uh, going forward right just a minute anything that any point that you want to put across I will make it very short this is a reality we have uh, signed some framework with MDL for some uh, export opportunities both in uh, new constructions as well as in maintenance this is our uh, current reality I would say I think doing work, uh, working more and doing more in India is not only the necessity out of a defense acquisition procedure or meeting the regulations. I think it is also the the requirement considering, and, and, and I, I can talk about the Europe, uh, uh, especially the, 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 the availability of the engineers, uh, 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 the, the right setup to expand, uh, having the right capable companies partner company in India also helps in the larger scheme of things for, for many foreign OEM. Right. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I'm not going in for a question answer session since we are already sh very short of time. We've overshot quite a bit. So uh, we'll forget about that. Thank you, panelists. Thanks so much. for. Uh, I think we kindly give them a, a loud round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. May I request Mr. Sagar Mitkari, defense enthusiast and a long-time supporter of Bharat Shakti, to please present mementos to our moderator and the panelists. I think that was a very nice uh, session. Uh, thank you very much to all our panelists for your sharing your ideas with us. A memento to our moderator, Brigadier S.K. Chatterjee, retired, the editor of Bharat Shakti .in. To Mr. Venkat Katkuri, Airbus. To Mr. William Blair, Lockheed Martin. To Mr. Laurent Jean, Naval Group. And to Mr. Andalib Shadman, Hensoldt. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, let's move into a very quick stretch the legs break. I won't call it a tea break, really, because I can't give you 20 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes is all I have. So I request all of you to, uh, you, can, you can go, you can get a cup of tea, and you can come back to your seat. I'll organize uh, someone to take the cups from you after you're done. Just let's stretch our legs for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back to hear the chief of army staff speak and interact with our founder-in-chief. Thank you very much.